Right, so welcome back to the channel, and this is a review of the General's Handbook 2019. Uh, if you're more interested in the points, go and check out the other video. But we're going to cover the other book, because there is two books this time. Yeah, one just for the points for pitched battles, and then this one is the everything else. Yeah, so of course we're going to kick off straight away with match play changes. So, there is 18 battle plans in this mission. Uh, in this rule book even uh, and you can roll a d3 and then a d6 to determine which mission you want to play and they specifically supersede the rule the battle plans in ghb 18 and the core rules yeah lucy's already gone through this mm -hmm. and there's quite a lot of changes isn't there yes there is so the first one is triumphs you roll your dice it used to be d3 now there's six so you roll a d6. If you roll a 1, inspired once per battle, when a friendly unit is picked to shoot or fight, you can see it is inspired. If you do so, you can re-roll hit rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of the phase. Mm -hmm. If you roll a 2, is bloodthirsty. Once per battle, when a friendly unit is picked to shoot or fight, you can see it is bloodthirsty. If you do so, you can re-roll wound rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of the fears. Three is... Indomitable. It's once per battle. You can make save. If you do, you can re-roll save rolls for attacks that target... Pick a unit and you can re-roll save rolls for attacks that target the unit until the end of the fears. Number four is unbowed. Bored? Bowed? Um, it's basically you pick a unit and they don't take battle shock for that phase. So it saves you using the command point. Yeah, and number five is eager once per battle before you make a one or charge for the friendly unit. You can do, you can save eager. If you do so, you can re roll that run or charge. That's kind of handy again without having to spend the command mm -hmm. point. And if you roll a six, it is cunning. Um, you can use a command ability without using the command point. That's very handy. Yeah. And moving on, there are some now three new generic command abilities. So every general or hero knows this. Um, the first one is all out in attack. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick a unit wholly within 12 of a hero or wholly within 18 of the general. You can re-roll hit rolls of a 1 for attacks made by that unit until the end of the phase. That's not bad. Yeah. The second one is all out defence. It's again the same ranges and within ranges of hero or general. And this one is you can re-roll save rolls of a 1 cool. for attacks that target the unit. And the third one is volley fire. And you can re-roll hit rolls of a 1 for attacks made by that unit until the end of the phase. So it's all, you pick one unit, and it's all they've got to be within 12 of a hero or 18 of your general. It's quite handy that, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah. So, scenery. There's yep. more scenery. There's two tables, table A and table B. And, and it says you must use them, which is interesting yes. because we don't normally use them. Mm-hmm. So table A says D6. First one is damned. At the start of your hero phase, you can pick one friendly unit within one inch of this damned terrain feature to make a sacrifice. If you do so, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, but you can reroll hit rolls of a 1 until your next hero phase. That used to be plus 1 to hit. Mm. Arcane is number 2. Add 1 to the casting, unbind, unbinding, and dispelling rolls for wizards within one inch of this feature. Inspiring, add one to the bravery for characteristic for units while they're within one inch. Deadly is number four. It's roll a dice for each unit that finishes finishes a normal move or charge move within one inch of a deadly terrain feature. On a one the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Number five is mystical. Roll a dice each time you Allocate a wound or mortal wound to a model within one inch. On six plus, it is negated. 
and number six is sinister, sinister subtract one from the brave characteristics of units while they're within one inch of sinister terrain so table b right sorry you roll a d6 before you pick which table it will be on a one two three you pick rules from table a and a four five six it's from table b and this is table b's if you roll a one on the d6 overgrown models are not visible to each other if an imaginary straight line one millimeter wide drawn between the closest points of the two models crosses over more than one inch of any overgrown terrain feature it's basically a citadel board yeah this scenery rule does not apply if either model can fly if you roll a two it is entang entangling subtract two from one and charge rolls to a minimum of zero for units that are within one inch of an entangling terrain feature. Number three, volcanic. At the start of each of your hero phase, roll a dice for each volcanic terrain feature. On a six, each unit within one inch of that terrain feature suffers D3 more Oof. wounds. Commanding. At the start of your hero phase, sorry, this is number four. At the start of your hero phase, if your general and no enemy general is within one inch of a commanding terrain feature, add one to the number of command points you receive at fears. Nice. Number five is healing. Um, at the start of your hero fears, all the dice for each friendly unit within one inch of any healing terrain. On a six, you heal D3 wounds. And if you roll a six, nullification. In the enemy hero phase, any heroes within one inch, any of your heroes, one inch of any nullification terrain, one of them can attempt to unbind one spell in the same manner as a wizard. If they can already unbind a spell, they can attempt to bind one additional. In addition, any, any endless spell that is set up or finishes a move within one inch of a nullif nullification terrain is dispelled. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so missions and battle plans. You've got a total of 18. You need to roll a D6-4. Um, sorry, a D3 and then a D6, depending on the table. Now, most of the missions are actually pretty much the same. The way that you score points, things like that. What has changed about them is the location of the objectives and the deployment. Yeah. For example, this is just one example, um, Star Strike. You now not only have three lines across the center and then one across each person's territory, you now roll 2d6 to determine where it lands left to right. Uh, Scorched Earth, for example, you have uh, eight objectives and instead of playing along your six foot board edge you play along the four foot board edge instead so they've swapped all the uh, deployment zones around mm -hmm. um very very interesting and i'm looking forward to actually playing yeah it's nice that they're keeping them fresh but still familiar yeah but as another part of uh matched player mercenary companies now, there was two of them shown off in the, uh, the Forbidden, Forbidden Power Ball. book, which were pretty cool. Uh, and basically, they work like allies, so that you can still only take them based on your number of allies' points. If you use points to take mercenaries, you then cannot use those points for your allies. Um, so there is some pretty cool ones. You can use them, of course, uh, in matched play as well. However, we do have a few additional ones, which are pretty cool. Uh, so the first one is the Sons of Lichmaster Mercenary Company. It's one necromancer, zero to three units of zombies or skeletons, and one corpse cart, up to one corpse cart. Uh, you can add one to the attack characteristics of weapons used by the zombies or skeletons, uh, whilst they're wholly within 18 of the necromancer. That's good. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Of course, bear in mind, though, if you do take any mercenary companies, you do not get your first command point mm -hmm. uh, on the first turn. Um, which, you know, it's a little bit of a 
yeah. plumber, but you know, it means that you're getting your allies are essentially getting their own allegiance. Yeah, yeah. Abilities. So, is it worth it? Possibly, maybe not. Grug Brothers Mercenary Company, one to three Ale Guzzler Gargans. <laughs> Sibling rivalry is their rules. You can re-roll hit rolls of a 1 for attacks made by a unit from this mercenary company that is within 6 of one other unit from the same company. You can instead re-roll all hit rolls for attacks made by a unit from this mercenary company if it is within 2 other units. So if you have 3 giants and one of them is within range of 2, you can re-roll all them lovely hits. <laughs> and that is the problem with giants, is hitting. Yeah. Uh, we've got Order of the Blood Drenched Rose, which is one Vampire Lord, uh, must be mounted on a Nightmare Steed, and one to three units of Blood Knights. Do not take Battle Shocks for them. Mm. It's okay. Uh, Nimyard's Rough Riders, uh, one zero to one Free Guild General, one to three units of Free Guild Pistoliers, uh, and one up to one unit of Free Guild Outriders. Uh, so their allegiance abilities, eyes and ears. Instead of setting up on the battlefield this mercenary company, uh, you can place it to one side and say that it's scouting as a reserve unit. If you do so, that you can place it wholly within six inches of any board edge and more than nine from enemy units. Any number of units from this company can be set up that way. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, there's four more actually, so the fact that you get ten is pretty decent. There is um, a Dwarf 1, so you can take uh, 0 to 1 Cogsmith, 1 to 3 Cannons or Organ Guns, and then one uh, up to 1 Gyrocopter or Gyro Bomber. Add 1 to hit rolls for attacks made by Cannons and Organ Guns from this company. If the Gyrocopter or Gyro Bomber from the same mercenary company is within 12 of the target, mm. so basically he can spot for them. That's mm. canny, that. Uh, Scrogs Menagerie Mercenary Company, one Chaos Gargant, and then zero to three Chaos Spawn Warhounds or Furies. The Chaos Gargant from this mercenary company can use the at the double forward into victory and inspiring presence command abilities uh, from the core rules as if it were a general. However, any command abilities uh, can only affect units from the same mercenary company. So basically, your Gargant becomes a hero. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rampage's Mercenary Company, uh, zero to one Dark Oath Chieftain or Dark Oath War Queen, and one to three units of Chaos Marauders. Uh, after you set this uh, unit up from this Mercenary Company, you can move D six inches. Whoa. The Gut Stuffers Mercenary Company, <laughs> one Fire Belly, and one to three units of Money is. You can reroll charge rolls for units from this Mercenary Company. However, if a unit from this mercenary company is within 12 of the enemy at the start of the charge phase, it must attempt to charge and must make a charge move if it's possible to do so. Ooh. So, pretty cool. At least the acknowledging yeah, gut busters there. Definitely. Which I do like. I do like it. That is most of matched play. Now, there is new rules for a thousand point matches. I'm not going to go over all of them, uh, but basically it lets you play uh, meeting engagements. You can play on a smaller table. It's like, you know, if you've got a dining table that's not quite as big as a full-size gaming table, it means you can play a smaller game. Um, it does break your da army down even further. Um, it looks fun. Yeah. It's if you've got like sort of 90 minutes an hour and you want to play a very, very quick game. You don't have to set up the full table. Um, but most of the rules are the same. You can't double up on um, detachments. You can take much less heroes um, and so forth. So that is a pretty cool addition. There is also specific battle plans yeah. for them, uh, which are designed to play on smaller uh, and surface area. And, and it's totally different than pitch battle, but it's, it's quite complicated. And... To explain it without you on the pictures, which we aren't allowed to do, it'll be impossible. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we'll not be able to. It's. <sighs> yeah. 
However, we do have several Allegiance abilities in the General's Handbook still. We do. Considerably less than last time because we have a lot of Battle Tomes since is, last time. There is one, though, that I was very disappointed about because I was hoping they would get the one book soon. Seraphon. Are they still in here? Yes, Oh. So, there is traits for Darkling Covens. I'm not going to cover all of the command traits, the artifacts and the, and the traits. You know, it would take a long time to go through them all. So, I'm just going to have a look at the ones that we are familiar with. Um, so, you do have Darkling Covens. You've got Dispossessed, which means yeah. no Dwarf book soon, unfortunately. You've got Free Peoples still. Again, the fact we've got those is still good. Mm-hmm. Seraphon, unfortunately, you do have um, their rules in here still, but they do have a spell law. Uh, they've got command traits depending upon whether you have a Saurus, a Slan, or a Skink as your general. Mm -hmm. There's only three each. Yeah. And of course, they've also got the Celestial Conjugation. Um, I don't know if the table has changed. I suspect it may have. But 24 points. Get you the Stilladon. What? Yeah, 24 Conjuration Points. I think you get them if you don't cast a spell. Mm. Uh, you receive one Celestial Conjuration Point if your general is a Slan, and D3 uh, if there's one or more Saurus, Astra, the Lith Bearers. Uh, you can get three instead of being able to attempt to cast a spell as well if your general is a Slan. So yeah, and you can summon units very quickly with them. Mm hmm. So, yeah, a bit of a disappointment because I really, really expected them to get a book they've, soon. They've got eight of the few people who have who you um armors that is in this book, they have got the most. Mm -hmm. but, but again, it's sad that they're still in here. Yeah, there's two battalions in here at least. I believe they are very similar to the last time. Um, so no changes as far as that goes. Wanderers, um. We still have those. Uh, I know they nerfed this though, so you could only do it with one unit. Yeah, one friendly wanderer's unit, wholly within six of the edge of the battlefield, can leave and redeploy wholly within six inches of another battlefield edge. Mm -hmm. It used to be all originally when they introduced it, so that's a bit of a shame that it's only one. Mm -hmm. But still, it's one per turn. Slaves to Darkness. Again, this is another book that people were expecting, yeah. Lucy. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately, that hasn't uh, changed. And Iron Jaws. Yeah. Which begs the question, Iron Jaws is in this, so what could the destruction on it come and be? It's got to be Guts. It's got to be Guts. I hope so. Mm -hmm. So much. Uh, Iron Jaw changed. Uh, Mighty Destroyers is now a command ability, but you just get to do one of the actions. Um, so the unit can make a normal move if it is more than 12 inches from any enemy units. Pile in. <gasps> Pile in and attack with its melee weapons. That's a command ability. Yeah, because yeah. before oh. you used to have to roll a 6 and you could pile in, but you couldn't attack. Mm -hmm. You can now actually attack. Wow. Wow. You kind of pick the same unit to benefit from this command ability more than once per hero if it is. Wow. That's actually decent now. Mm -hmm. You've still got Smashing and Bashing and you've still got Eager to Battle, which is re uh, add one to your charge rolls for Iron Jaws units. And Smashing and Bashing, if you kill something, you get to immediately activate another unit. Something that we do get, though, mm -hmm. is a spell law. Wow. Yeah. And I had a quick read of these. Uh, there's a couple that are pretty cool, but that great big green hand of Gork. <laughs> okay, let's see. Do you recognise the spell hand of Gork? Yes. And where is that from? Um, the Gloom Spite? Yes. And another one which is totally different, it's your Iron Jaws. That's the foot of Gork. Leaf claws? No, 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 but I'm saying the hand of Gork is a spell for Gloom Spite. Yes. Can you remember what it does? Yes. Just tell us what this one does. <laughs> exactly the same. Oh, shush. <laughs> oh, God. You can redeploy the unit nine inches away from enemy models. 
fast and stayed objectives and windy. And... Yep, that's massive for Iron Jaws because they're yeah. all about speed. And the problem is that without uh, battalions and command abilities and stuff to get them moving, yeah, you are very slow. Exactly. So that is that is very very good. So yeah, uh, the fact that they've actually got a full six spell law, you've got your six commander traits and artifacts as well, is pretty tasty. You've also then got the Iron Sons and the Blood Tooths uh, as well, which to be honest, I might have to give a go, mm, because definitely. I haven't used any of the bigger ones. Um, but yeah, that is the Allegiance ability, so significantly trimmed down, because definitely. obviously Bray Herds have had their own book, um, Fire Iron Slayers, Slayers. Uh, and I think the Slanesh. Mm -hmm. um, yes, because Spider Fang and stuff had their own, I believe. So they're all now gone. There's no new ones. No. Which is annoying for good busters, but there we go. Um, I'm looking forward to playing some of the new missions. Definitely. Um, um, it's going to, there's a, the move and all one. It looks complicated as hell. But it's so much easier than the other one. But it does look fun. It, we can't we, we can't explain any of the deployments because it would just... <laughs> yeah. Do you know what else I do love, though? Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a name and hero section in here. Of course, you've still got all your narrative play and your open play missions as well. So there's plenty of missions to get you in the mood for, you know, a very thematic battle. Mm -hmm. Um example there's a lot centering around the city of elixir um and there's arcane objectives there's streets of death rules there's a lot of stuff in the narrative games um to be able to do with this there's even an open war battle generator which is like the open war cards which we've got yes uh, it's pretty much like that so you've got uh what's that Six, twelve different deployments. Uh, you've got objectives. There's six. There's six twists. There's six ruses, and six sudden death as well. So as much as you don't have the cards, you can roll a dice and still achieve the open war cards. Yeah. Um, I do love playing with the open war cards. They are really, really, really cool. Um, there's open war terrain generators. There's army um, generators as well if you want to. Um, randomly build your army. That could be fun. Yep. I've never actually played um, a narrative. No, we'll have to have a look through them. In All fact, open. in fact, we were uh, going to start a Forbidden Power campaign. Yeah. Because we can play a narrative along with that. Because I want to use some relics, man. <laughs> Definitely. Get this though. Naming your heroes. Mhm. Mm so, should we name a Stormcast for you? Go on, man. Uh, so, pick a number one to six. Four. Titus. Pick another number. Two. Eagle. Pick another number. Six. So you've got Titus Eagle Claw. Nice. Very nice. Uh, let's have a look. Gloom Spite. You do it for us, because I've got the book here. Six. Gitrick. Two. Eye Porker. Bear four. in mind it's I P O K A. And mm -hmm. four you said. Yes, yeah, I've got all said yeah here odd numbers. Gatrick Eye Porker Dasquig Eater. <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> fun. Let's do an Iron Jaws. I like this. Let's do an Iron Jaws one. Well let me cause um Okay, okay. Uh five. Krog. Three. Where's good? Four. The biggest boss. So you know it's Krog, Bull Claw, the biggest claw. <laughs> Which other armies have we got then? Deepkin and Night Haunt. That's really cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And you've got uh, Slanesh, Nurgle, Zinch, Skaven, Slaves to Darkness, Corn, Stormcast. Ardeneth and Night Haunt, so not all of them. No. But still, that that's pretty cool. I do like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely like that. 
there's even rules for raids and ambush missions, which if you've seen the old general handbook where you did like the siege missions and stuff, uh, there's all sorts in for this. Um, night fighting rules. Roll 4d6 at the start of each battle round to see how much light there is. The roll is the maximum distance in inches that models can see that round. Attacks, spells and abilities that require one or more model to be visible to another cannot be made beyond this range. Wow. Mm. That card, there's a the card very similar in yeah. that one. It's very annoying. Yeah, I think, didn't we play a game that we had like we range did, 12 yeah. the entire game? Yeah. So, the, you know, there's a lot, a lot of content in, in this, um, in the battle plan book. Um, there's so much that you could actually fill out with it. And do you know what? I, I, I like that they've put the points in the separate book, Lucy. Definitely, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It means, you know, you, you don't have to, like, oh, where's it out and mm -hmm. all the way through. And, and once you get a hang of your army and once um, the apps are updated, you're taking a smaller general's handbook. Yeah. Instead of a big thick one. It's it's weird that actually even combined the two of them are actually thinner than last year's. Mm -hmm. But again, I think that's um because the less you allies. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, at the end, the you. Uh, the allegiance yeah. abilities. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot less of them. You haven't got all the summoning stuff because obviously they changed summoning last mm -hmm. year. Um, but yeah, it, it's a really really good book actually, and and there's so much content in it. At at. I'm going to say it. It's the best general handbook yet. Yes, I agree. And it's... I, I wouldn't mind trying some of the narrative in open play games, so... Yeah, definitely. I think that will definitely be coming to the channel soon. We'll probably... Say I really want to do Forbidden Power, but then the narrative at the same time, so we'll maybe try and combine them. Yes, that's a good idea, definitely. So that is it, folks. Like I said, if you're interested in the points, go and check out the other... Uh, video which will be up but stay tuned because obviously there will be a lot of Angel Sigma content coming over the mm -hmm. uh, next few weeks and it will all be from the new books yes so thanks for listening and watching <laughs> bye